I'm Revati Falke and I'm going to talk to you about the climate change impacts on childhood undernutrition. Now malnutrition consists of undernutrition which covers wasting, stunting as well as underweight uh, children and the other end of the spectrum is overnutrition which is basically overweight and obesity. Now, micronutrient deficiencies can potentially occur in both the over as well as the undernourished children. Now, how big is the problem? Almost 800 million individuals globally have been found to be chronically undernourished in 2014. About a third of the annual global deaths in children under 5 are directly or indirectly associated with malnutrition. Maternal and child undernutrition together is estimated to contribute to almost 10% of the global burden of diseases, so which is a huge number that we are talking about even today. So what are the main reasons for the global undernutrition that we see? It's mainly food insufficiency or calorie insufficiency because of inadequate food intake. Now the UNICEF describes a causal pathway between immediate basic and underlying factors of undernutrition and basically all of this addresses food insecurity in terms of not only the availability of food but the physical and economic access to it the quality of it, the stability of its availability, as well as the utilization of the nutrition when uh, food intake is adequate, which is basically determined by the uh, morbidity and the uh, disease status of, of the children. Now, everything is not bad news. So far, the world has been successful in reducing undernutrition by almost 30% when we talk about stunting and underweight children. However, there is also a simultaneous increase in the number of overnourished children in all geographic regions of the world. If you take a closer look though, you will see that the absolute number of undernourished children is actually, go actually on the rise in sub-Saharan Africa. If you look at these graphs, then children is actually, go actually on the rise in sub-Saharan Africa. If you look at these graphs, then the regional differences are evident. And if you, if, you, if, you, if you look at them, then basically wasting is a major concern in South and Southeast Asia. And on the other hand, stunting is a major concern when, it, when we talk about Africa, particularly Sub-Saharan Africa. Now, UNICEF estimates that the absolute number of stunted children is actually rising in the Sub-Saharan region of the world. Now, what is the impact of climate change when we talk about these impacts. Of course, the major impacts that climate change will have on undernutrition will be through crop yields. So if you look at the global farming practices, almost 80% of the global farming and up to 90% in the African region is rain fed. So basically almost 30% of the subsistence farmers in low and middle income countries will bear the impacts through weather variability and basically essentially reduction in the uh, crop yields uh, and crop productivity that is being seen. Now apart from the quantity of the food that is available to these populations, also the quality of the food will be affected by climate change. So recent evidence points at that carbon dioxide emissions will actually reduce the nutrient value of uh, staple foods such as wheat, barley and rice. All of this in the backdrop of the rise, a steady rise in the population, which is estimated to reach 9 billion by 2050. Now Lloyd and et al. predict that given all these factors and the interactions would actually increase the number of severely stunted children by between 30 to 50 percent in sub-Saharan Africa and almost 60 percent in Southeast Asia. This would mean an additional burden of 25 million children which will be added by 2050 globally uh, to, to the already existing burden that we are looking at. Now, of course, there is recognition that malnutrition is amongst the top five uh, impacts of climate change by both the WHO as well as the IPCC. So we decided to take a closer look at what evidence is available uh, in quantifying the impacts of weather variability and climate change on childhood undernutrition. We conducted a systematic literature review uh, to assess the associations between climate variability and stunting because stunting is the accumulated or the cumulative impact of repeated nutritional insults 
that children uh, in these settings face. To our surprise, we only found 15 studies which were testing the association between climate or weather variability and childhood stunting. And these studies were basically conducted in 16 countries and data ranged from about 1970 to 2008. Now, uh, almost 80% of these studies did find a significant but a variable link between weather variables and childhood uh, stunting. Apart from this, of course, the agricultural and crop uh, variables were found to be significantly associated in almost a third of the studies. And uh, individual factors such as age and gender were found to be significantly associated in over 70% of these studies. Now, not just that, also the household factors were found to be significantly associated in almost half of the studies uh, that were included in the systematic literature review. So the main message from the literature was, of course, that malnutrition is a complex web of determinants which range from uh, political factors, socioeconomic factors, health, demographic and cultural factors, which basically interact dynamically uh, and move from being determinants, uh, confounders to effect modifiers uh, when, it comes to when it comes to the final uh, outcome of undernutrition in children under five. But the main message was that apart from the household and individual factors, weather variables also play a significant role uh, when it comes to determining undernutrition in children under five. Now, a word of caution when we are interpreting the results from these studies, because a majority of them, so 10 of the 15 studies, actually used a secondary data, which was not collected with the intention of testing the associations between weather variability and uh, childhood undernutrition. The other thing was uh, the, the study designs. So majority of them were cross-sectional surveys, which are inherently incapable of um, assigning or, or testing causality. The other thing was that majority of the studies did not cover adequate time periods, uh, which allow us to talk about climate change. So typically about 10 years that, that we would expect. Uh, most of these studies were only part partial assessments, so none of them aim to have a comprehensive assessment of, you know, whether agriculture, um, socioeconomic, cultural and health and demographic factors, which, which basically have, uh, which have been known to be associated with uh, childhood undernutrition. Apart from that, only three of them assessed the impacts of micronutrient deficiencies simultaneously. Now, uh, in the absence of long-term high-quality data on a range of variables that we just identified, health, we as health scientists working in the field of climate change face two main problems. First is establishing causality, of course, and the second one is the, what fraction of the undernutrition currently can be attributed directly or indirectly to climate change. So the next steps that are available to us is, of course, to have the best case scenario would, of course, be to have data on all as many variables as possible uh, on a long term basis. But while this data becomes available to us, the option that we have is to systematically assimilate data from existing individual surveillance systems. This would also mean revisiting some of the statistical methods which are used in analyzing uh, secondary data in testing these associations. Apart from that, we could also have large multicentric uh, interdisciplinary studies conducted in geographically distinct areas, which can then help us investigate the different scenarios uh, of undernutrition in these settings. Last but not the least, we also need to maintain the focus at the household level because this is where the adaptation um, strategies need to be developed as the impacts are most significantly borne at this level. Thank you very much.